streaming for Garland, Texas and around the world. Welcome to the weekly Christ Unveiled webcast. Join us each week for our powerful worship services, our anointed and spiritual preaching ministry, and our doctrinal and insightful teaching ministry. Christ Unveiled Ministries, your church home on the internet. With you this morning, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. I'm not going to hold you long this morning, but I want to share with you uh, some statistics uh, as you're turning to that regarding uh, Christian giving. There, there was a time in this nation that Christians uh, routinely tithed. And the word tithe means tenth. They gave a tenth of their income uh, to the Lord, a tenth of their gross income. Uh, Sam Walmart was a tither. Uh, Many of the big companies that we see now, 50 years ago or more, when they were small companies, they were birthed in tithing. The owners would actually tithe, and the Lord would bless them. And tithing does return a blessing Uh, upon God's people. It's not a blessing that comes in a week or sometimes not in a month, sometimes not in a year. But when you cast your bread upon the waters, after many days, it does return unto you. And God does not necessarily give you money back because you gave him money because there are some things that we have need of that are more valuable than money. Uh, When you have a a, a daughter or a son out on dope, money don't help you. You need your baby to be saved. You can go through things in, in your life that money, money doesn't solve every single problem that you can come up against. Uh, but, but when we give to God and when we acknowledge Him, it is a blessing. However, when we come into the church, I, I know when I got saved, I, I knew nothing about church affairs, had never really went to church. And the first time I heard the preacher say something about tithe, uh, it was almost in a threatening manner. It was almost like uh, you, you, you got a tithe or you're going to be cursed, man. You're going to be cursed. And I didn't even know what a tithe was. And I wasn't really opposed too terribly much to the idea of tithing. Uh, but it was more ignorance on my part of not understanding what the tithe is. And so this morning I want to give you three reasons why you should tithe. And let me give you the definition first. A tithe is the first tenth of your increase. It's the first tenth of whatever you've been increased. If you got a check this past week, a tenth of that goes to the Lord. Uh, Not because you owe him. It's not a bill like your utility bill. It's you honoring the Lord and saying, Lord, you are my source. You've given me 100% of everything that I have. Surely a tenth of it I give back to you as an acknowledgement that you've given me everything. And the tithe is really considered somewhat, the tithe and the offering considered somewhat a seed. Where you sow seed, you sow seed, and after so many days, it begins to produce. And he gives more seed to the sower that is faithful uh, in his sowing. So let's look at Proverbs chapter, well let me give you these statistics first. It says that American Christians give one5 to 3.1% of their annual income to the church. 1.5 to Uh, 3.1%. It should be 10% or more, but it's down at 3%. Here's another one. Four out of 10 church attendees give nothing to their local church. Almost 50% give nothing at all to the local church. One out of every ten regular church members consistently gives a percentage of their income to the church. One out of ten. The final one is the national average of people who tithe in their local church is 4% of the uh, church attending Christians. That, that's, that's horribly low. And I think that most of it is because people simply do not have an understanding of why you should tithe. When, when they told me, I, I asked the question, I said, well, what is the tithe? What's the man even talking about? They said, well, that's one-tenth of your income. 
And I thought, really, one-tenth? That's quite a bit of money. That's, that's a car payment. You've thought the same thing. <laughs> you know, I could, I could pay some bills with that. That's a lot of money. And so the question looms in our mind then, why should I tithe? And let's answer the question. Proverbs chapter 3, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Your stuff, substance is your riches or your wealth, your increase, if you will. Uh, when we tithe, when we give to God, it is a way of honoring him. Honor the Lord with, the, with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Now, the first fruit of their increase would be considered a tithe. It would be considered, well, that's what it is, the first fruit. Now, he says if you do that, if you honor him with your substance and, and, and with the first fruit of your increase, he says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. He's saying this, that when you honor the Lord... In your financial giving, he will bless you. He will strong bless you. Well, we spent, I think, about 16 years over in the other building. And during that time, uh, we had men from uh, oh, just all over. Uh, uh, there's one, I, where was he from? I think Pakistan. Uh, and the Lord laid on my heart to give the man an offering. And, uh, you know, when you're giving someone an offering that you're never going to see again, how many know you, you don't make the offering that good? Because you're never going to see him again. <laughs> but the Lord told me the amount, and, and we gave it to the man. Um, and then we had his brother come in from Pakistan. He's a pastor in Pakistan. He stood on the pulpit over there. He preached some powerful, powerful messages. But as he was leaving, here's what he said. He said, I, I've preached all over the United States. He goes, God is going to bless your church because you still have a missionary mindset. You still give to the purpose of God's work. Because most churches no longer do that. Most churches no longer have a mindset. We as Christians have become very, very stingy with our money. And it's because we have become very absorbed with self. Well, it's going to be quiet today. I can already tell. Let me just get down here. <laughs> we're very self-centered and so we want to take every, all of our resources and use them on ourselves, and we forget to honor the Lord with our substance with the first fruit of our increase and it ends up that our barns are not filled our, our, our needs are not always met sometimes and this, we should not be this way but sometimes Christians live from paycheck to paycheck and, and that means that you're suffering lack. If you have to float a check on, fri on, on Wednesday to get you to Friday when your check comes in, that means that you're living in lack. And I, I used to live like that. That's why I know. As a Christian, I used to live like that. Not realizing that the reason that, that I was suffering lack is because I was outside of how God has ordained that he's going to bless his people. And when I learned how to tithe, and have a sister Lincoln and I have been tithing for 30 years now, I've noticed that no matter what truck I have, no matter what car I have, it don't break. I had a little Nissan truck. I think it was a Nissan, that last truck I had. I can't remember what it was. But I had close to 300,000 miles on it. It never broke. Alternator didn't go out. Starter didn't go out. The hoses on the radiator didn't pop. I drove that truck and drove it and drove it and finally just sold it. And I got another one now. It's got, uh, I think, 200 and something on it. And it won't break. Because God is able to sustain it. So he doesn't always, you, you know, they've been teaching this on, on the television set. You give God 1,000, he's going he's gonna to give you 10,000. No, he's not. No, he's not. Because he can give you something better than 10,000. If you're going to take the 10000 and you're going to go buy a new truck, you could just make that truck just last forever and just keep on lasting. But when we don't honor him, our bar, we, things begin to, to get very tight. We, we look for much. I believe Haggai said, you look for much and lo, it comes to little. You go earn money and bring it home and put it in a bag with holes in it. 
And it goes on to say, because the Lord said, because I did blow upon it. And many times we're grappling and we're scraping and we're trying to, through our own efforts, put something together. And because we're not honoring God, he doesn't honor us. Now, I've heard it preached, and many of you probably have too, that, you know, Malachi said, uh, will a man rob God? And they said, well, how have we robbed you? He said, you robbed me and your tithe and your offerings, you're cursed with a curse. Have you ever heard that? Now, let me explain what that doesn't mean. It does not mean that if you don't tithe, God turns into an ogre where he used to bless you, now he curses you. That does not mean that. What it does mean is that God has his system baked into the creation. It's all already baked in. God doesn't have to do anything. Um... There's just certain things that you have to do and certain things that you cannot do. You don't have a choice. You have to breathe. If you stop breathing, you're cursed with a curse. That's what he's saying. It's baked in. If you go to the highest building, you have to stay back off the edge. If you walk out off the edge, you're cursed with a curse. Boom. It's, it's baked into the creation. And God has, we see this and we look at the way that any kind of agriculture works, it works the same exact way. If you have three apple seeds, three apple seeds, and you buried them in three different places in your yard, the very best you could hope for is three apple trees. You might only get two, but best case scenario, you'll get three, you will never get four. You will never get four. <laughs> now, you can give God a dime. You can give him a dollar when you know your tithe was 250 and you give him a dollar. You're going to get a dollar tree. One. But if you paid your tithes, you're going to get you're going to get abundant. If we understand it, we would say to the farmer, you are ridiculous for going out there in a 50-acre field and you sowed one handful of seed. What are you thinking? Are you crazy? But yet we take that same wrong concept and we bring it into the house of God and we wonder why it ain't working. It's because you ain't working it. It doesn't work the way you want it to work. It works the way because God wants... Here's the thing is, where your treasure is... <laughs> That's where your heart's at. You can find yourself. Just go, I use uh, Quicken. So I can go back and I can see where all the money went. It puts up a nice big pie chart. The mortgage is going to be the big one. A little bit smaller is going to be the car. But then right the next one needs to be what you gave to God. Or sometimes it can be above the car. And God challenges us till we get to the place that we can consistently Give him the first tent. It's not a bill. It's not just another one of your bills. It's the first tent. You give it to God. And then you look for God to sustain and bless your life. You honor the Lord with your substance. That's the first reason that you should tithe is you should honor the Lord. Because let's just be honest. When you get in a mess, who are you going to call? You, you're going to call on the Lord. And so you should honor him. And let me just say this. I, you know, I was this way, but I was single, so I was able to do it a little different. When I first heard about the tithe, I, I really didn't have enough money to tithe. I, I mean, you know, I was kind of upside down in my finances. And so what I did, I was single at the time. I just, I just tithed my grocery money. I just gave God the grocery money. It's a tithe. It was 10%. Wrote the check. It ultimately, it bounced. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to go even longer without grocery money to make good for them. <laughs> but if you can't tithe, you got a family, give God 5%. And then the next month, make it 6 And you keep working it and stay focused on it until you get it to 10%. And then you hold there and get solid in that. Sister Lincoln and I have tithed for 30 years. And God has blessed us. He, he has blessed us in many different aspects of our life and as you give to God as you give to God you won't realize it but you're growing in your faith you're more able to it's easier for you to give money to God 
Because you've learned that, man, God, this system works. It's real. It's real. Many of you will remember, and I'm bringing this only up. I don't, I, I don't bring it up to build myself up. I'm struggling like everybody else. Uh, but when we were in the other church and we had a need, I went home that night and I said, honey, you know, I think we're the leaders of the church. We need to lead out in this. And we sat down and agreed. We're going, we wrote a check for $10,000. That's a lot of money. And we ain't rich. But we have come to a place that we know that we can trust God, that we can put this in God's hand, and we don't have to worry about what's going to happen to us. We're in God's hand. See, it's very easy to sing the songs and say, oh, I belong to God and I belong to God. But there comes a time you're going to have to really prove, do you belong to him or not? See, we say, well, everything I have belongs to the Lord. Well, why don't you give him the tenth then? If everything belongs to the Lord, because God will put you to the test and he will see. Listen, sometimes we, we get this mindset, well, I, I already tithe. And I, I've, I've, been, I've always been tithing, and that's good. That's commendable, and we thank God for the tithers that we have in this ministry. We thank God for you. But that is not the mark. That, that, that is not a place that you can stand down and boast that, oh, yes, I'm a tither, praise the Lord. Because that's just the least. We said this the other night in Bible study. You know, 10% is, how, the government wants 30. You ever... Calculate your check. Government wants 30% of your paycheck. Calculate. It's right between 25 and 30%. Unless you're older. If you go to the, to the diner and you order dinner, you and your spouse, the waiter wants 15% or 20 And when you get in trouble, you can't call the waiter, and you know you can't call the government. They'll put you on hold forever. They'll have you just... Yeah, try to get a welfare check for them folks. Social Security, anything. They hold you up. They're hoping you die before they have to start paying. That's really what, I'm not making that up. They're really hoping you die. <laughs> so they don't have to pay it at all. But the Lord just says, honor me with the first tenth, and I will, I'll get you back. I'll cover you. And it's not that God has to say, oh, he tithed. I got to bless him. No, it's baked into the creation. It's part of the way that the system is set up. So the first reason then is we should honor the Lord. The second reason is that when we tithe and we give to the Lord consistently, we do what we know is right, it absolutely opens the blessings of God for your life. More than this just was baked into the, the creation, he absolutely, well, let's just read it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. The Lord says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me and prove me now herewith saith the Lord that little term prove me I'm teaching this morning you have to understand what that means it means put me to the test God is saying test me in this so I say well I don't know if it's gonna work well just do a test just test God say God I don't know if it's going to work or not, but you said to put you to the test. I'm going to put you to the test. And it says, and see if I will not open the windows, plural, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. That's the blessing of giving to God. The windows of heaven open up and he begins to pour out his blessings upon you. And, and the second benefit is, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That means I get the devil off your back. But many times we're under constant pressure. We're, too often we're under financial pressure and we're under a lot of spiritual pressure. Not just because of the ministry you have, spiritual pressure because the devil's on your case. The, the, you know, I've noticed over the years, whenever I preach on tithing, uh, it puts pressure on people. But if you're already tithing this morning, you ain't really worried about it at all. You're like, yeah, say on, preacher, say on. <laughs> it don't bother you at all. <laughs> but God wants all of his people to get in on his program. 
because he wants to bless you, but your blessings can't come through a, through a course that God did not ordain. You know, people, instead of, instead of just trusting God and tithing, now people will play the lottery. And you don't lost more than you won. Because the system is set up that way. Well, I sat on the, the thing one time when, before they brought the lottery to Texas. It was a, a survey, not a survey, but a, a, a test group. And they were seeing what type of odds would you spend your money on. And I've never bought a lottery ticket in my life. Because the odds are you can get hit by lightning three times before you hit the lottery once. And you know, you know what they've said? They said, well, you can't win if you don't play. Hey, have you heard that on TV? Well, you can't lose if you don't play. And you're going to lose way more than what you win. But we, take, we would rather go out and do that, which is basically saying, God, I don't trust you for my future. I'd rather roll the dice myself and see, can I do something myself than to just trust God. David said, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God takes care of his people. He takes care of his people. He said, prove me now. See if I'll not, number one, open the windows. And number two, I'll rebuke the devourer. I'll get the devil off your case. Now, the final scripture I want to show, and this is reason number three. Our knowledge of God should dictate that we tithe. Because of the knowledge that we possess concerning the character and the faithfulness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <coughs> Paul is ministering on this and he really gives us uh, a, a good view into how, into how this works. But this I say, verse no, uh, chapter 9 verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly... The word sparingly means stingily. It means little bitty. It means, it, it means greedily. <laughs> he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully, it means generously or liberally, shall, shall reap also bountifully. Now, here's what this means, saints. It means a couple things. Do you see that in your Bible? Did you see that on the pages of your Bible? It means I have nothing to do with that. That was in your Bible before you met me. So don't look where that preacher wants to get my money. No, that was your Bible that said that to you. <laughs> and, he, he's, and here's what he's saying is that he gives you the control to dial in the blessing. You can turn it up to bountiful or you can turn it down to sparing. It's whatever you want. And many times we're so self-centered that we keep it turned down low because we don't have the faith to turn it any higher. Because let's, let's just admit it, it takes faith to be consistent with God. Because sooner or later you can be tired, uh, you know, for years and years, but sooner or later God puts you in a tight place. Does anybody know anything about that? And it's like, oh man, if I tithe, man, it's going to be like, maybe I'm going to be a little short. And what you going to do? Well, you do the same exact thing you was going to do when you wanted to buy them new shoes and you was a little bit short. You take it from Peter and you give it to God. <laughs> That's what you would have done. That's what you would have done. You know, when you get short, you say, well, I just, you know, I'm just going to have to cut $20 out the groceries and $5 from here and, and I'm going to go get it. You do the same thing with the Lord. See, th there's none of us that could not pay tithe if we, if we wanted to. Because unlike, unlike any other system in the world, any other system, it's based on a percentage. No matter what you make, the, the tithe stings the same. If you make $20 a week, the tithe is $2. And that's one tenth. If you make $20,000, it's still 10%. It has the same, it's the only fair way to do it, which is why you can forget the United States ever going to a percentage-based <laughs> tax, a flat tax. That's not going to happen because it's fair. And rich people don't want the fair, don't want it to be fair.
But he says, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Now here's what's important. If you, the, the thought should never be, the, the preacher should never be so heavy on you. It's like, pay your tithe or you're a devil. It, it should never, that should never be, you have to out of your heart want to give to God. And let me just say this, if in your heart you don't want to give to God, keep your money. Because it ain't going to bless you no way. <laughs> just, just put it back in your pocket, go, go, go get you some Budweiser. Because that, that, that's where you're going anyway. See, many times we don't give to God because of our own self-interest. And we don't dare actually actually say anything about it and we hope the preacher don't say anything about it because it's going to expose how self-centered we are let, let me say this there is a place in your financial life that you don't the tithe is no more important it's no more important i give god what he wants now we tithe I, my tithe is taken out of my check before i ever get it but that's because i i'm the ceo and so I don't have to give anything to the government. I can just reduce my annual by 10%. And, and it's all in God's house. But the Lord wants all of his people to get to a place that the tithe is not this big threshold. That you can hear the spirit of the Lord speak into your ear and tell you what number to give. And no matter how much it hurts, you give that number. You know, the Lord speaks to me about, we are, the tithe is already gone. The Lord will speak to me and say, I want you to write a check for $1,000. I'm like, well, Lord, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lord, you know I love you. <laughs> but I ain't hardly got $1,000. <laughs> but you know what? As soon as he t says that, uh, if I don't have a check, I'll call Sister Ling and say, just, honey, just write the check. <laughs> the Lord said write the check and we'll write it and just give it anyway and it'll cut us down sometimes God will cut you right down till you don't know you don't know what's going to happen next but here's what here's what happens you don't mind being there you learn how to live here you learn how to how to be here and not be afraid because saints when the money gets down it puts fear in your heart don't it come on somebody I know when Sister Lincoln and I, when we put all our money to build that church over there. And I mean, I, I, the devil was giving me visions. <laughs> I could see me and Sister Lincoln, we was living under a bridge. And we had, <laughs> we had black smudges on our face and raggedy clothes. <laughs> we were panhandling. <laughs> and, but but we, we did it anyway. And we just had to learn how to trust God in an uncomfortable place. We learned how to abound and we learned how to be abased. We learned how to trust God in everything. And so then when the Lord begins to speak and say, I want you to write a check for $10,000. And you say, there's nobody, $10,000 hurts. I don't care who you are. <laughs> and you say, well, look, you know, the Lord has asked for it. I, I'm sure I didn't misunderstand what he said. And you write it. And you think, I, you know, we just, I don't know, we're just going to have to trust God. But God always comes through. And little by little, we're going through something right now. It is, one, it is uh, maybe the single greatest trial that we have been through since, since Christ unveiled has been, has been here. But I've already made up my mind, Sister Lincoln and I, we talked about it and said, if we're going down, we're going down right here. This, this is where we die, right here. And we've learned how to live at that place. I'll tell you somebody that I admire this person for his ability to trust God. How many know who Brother Swaggart is? That man's got crazy faith. He'll not have a dime. He'll have the bank calling him wanting to take money back. I mean, wanting to take what, property back, take radio stations down. And he would just flat trust God. And I've sat in the congregation and they present what the problem was to the congregation. And we need folks to come down and, pay and give $1,000 towards this. And I mean, so herds of people. And then the Lord touched my heart. You need to take something down there too. 
<laughs> but able to live like this. Saints, you're going to have to get here because your job's going to play out here pretty quick. You remember it used to be the homosexuals couldn't get jobs? Remember that? It's going to be Christians in a minute. You're going to have to learn how to live right here and trust God. And if you can't trust him with the abundance that you have now and only 10%, how are you going to trust him with your life? How, how are you going to put your life in his hands? He says that every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And, and in response to your giving, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you all grace he's able to make it abound to you that means you have favor everywhere you go Every, everything you touch you have favor it was a miracle that we found a bank that would finance this this building I had banks turning me down everywhere and then I, I finally said okay I just we just gonna have to wait the bank loan officer came to my office I didn't even know him never even talked to him he came to my office Got the financials, called me the next day and said, you got it. He's able to make all grace abound unto you. He goes on to say, so that, so that you always, meaning there's never a drought, always having all sufficiency, meaning you do not suffer lack, have all sufficiency in all things, so that you may abound in every good work. Do you know, here's, why, here's God's program. I, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. God wants to grow you up in your, in your faith regarding finances so that you don't get stuck on the tithe. You can move past that. You can, you can give more than that. Because when he sees that you're going to just trust him, he can put resources in your hand. I am fully aware that not everybody can write a $10,000 check. And through, through Sister Lincoln, there's times we wrote $30,000 checks, $65,000 checks. He will put resources in your hands so that you may abound in every good work. It's not for you to go buy. I, I drive a six-year-old truck with 200-something thousand miles on it. It's not for you to go out and build you a, a, a customized highway to hell. It's so that you are one of the pillars, that you are there, that there's a need. In the local church, there's a need. God has a need, or, or he touches your heart to support an evangelist or whatever. You can write a check, and God knows that he can depend on you to trust and trust you. But if, if he can't trust you with the least amount of the tithe, how can he ever trust you to really be someone that, could, that he can put money in your hands? It's quiet in here, man. Is this too hard? Because this is the truth, saints. This is the truth. You can be blessed. Now, somebody said, well, that, but, Brother Lincoln, that's because you're well off. No, brother, Sister Lincoln and I have been poor. We, we have been poor. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we have been down where we, we don't have nothing. I, I can remember this before Sister Lincoln and I got married. I was so poor. How <laughs> poor were you, Brother Lincoln? <laughs> I couldn't afford groceries, but of course, you know you got to eat, right? So I would go get the pancake mix because I can't cook either. You just add water and buy a hard stick of margarine. You know, the hard kind. <laughs> and I ate four pancakes in the morning, and I ate four pancakes in the evening. And that's how I lived. So, so I've been there. Many of you have been there, but you ain't got to stay there. I still like pancakes, but I don't have to eat them for dinner. <laughs> I ain't got to get the, the water, add water kind either. I can pull right up the IHOP. <laughs> I'll have the breakfast sampler, please. <laughs> Eggs over easy. <laughs> I'm just saying that your station in life can change if you change. When you know better, you do better. God, listen, God don't really need your money. 
<laughs> he said, all the gold is mine, all the silver is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. It already belongs to God. Your soul belongs to him. So the money is a way that you can show him because money is dear to us. The scripture said money solves, uh, answers all problems. And money's dear to us. But when we take money and we give it back to God, we're giving him something that he knows is precious to us. Because we could very well end up spending that on ourselves, but you give it to someone else. I bought my wife a purse one time, uh, and it was a, a dooney, and they're expensive. <laughs> and she was, she, she was okay with me buying a purse, but she was really happy that I didn't buy it on my credit card. I took cash out of my, bo out of my pocket and bought it. She goes, if it was on the credit card, it really wouldn't mean that much. But you took cash out of your wallet and you bought it. Because money's dear to us. <laughs> Saints, learn to give to God. Bring him the tithe. Bring him the offering. Purpose in your heart. I, I'm, not, I'm, going to, I'm going to give to God. Because when it's all said and done, I don't want to sing empty praises to him. I, I don't want to give him empty worship. I, I don't want to make statements like God has everything that I have. No, I'm willing to give everything I have to the purpose of God. I'm willing to walk away with nothing and God have everything. Because I know that when it's all said and done, God's going to take care of me. And he's going to meet my need. That's the kind of faith that God is wanting to develop within his people. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please, all over the room? Musicians, would you please? Father, we just thank you this morning for your plan and your purpose within our hearts and lives. And Father, you've been nudging me for weeks now concerning this, and I ask you that, Lord, you would take these words that may have been poorly spoken, but God, by the Holy Spirit, that you would put them into the hearts of your people, that you touch these hearts, that you'd embed your truth within these hearts. And Father, we ask this morning in Jesus' name, help us not to get stuck on the tithe. Help us not to get stuck on whatever the preconceived offering was, but God, help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Be it much or be it little, help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Would you stand to your feet, please, all over the room? Would you stand to your feet? Now, you know where you're at this morning. You may be still striving towards the tithe, or you may be trying to surpass the tithe, wherever that you're at. Why don't you just, out of your own heart, begin to ask God this morning, Father, help me to come up higher. Lord, I want to be one of those that you can trust. I want to be one of those, God, that you can put resources in my hand and know that I'll be faithful to you. Come on, just reach out to the Lord this morning and ask him to help you. Ask him to give you faith in this, in this regard. Believe Him and trust Him. He will do what He said. Believe Him and trust Him. He will do what He said. Whatever the Lord said He would do. He'll do it for you, but you got to believe, believe he'll do it for you. Believe him and trust him, he will do what he said. Trust him, he will do what he said. Whatever the Lord said he would do, he'll do it just for you. But you gotta believe, believe he'll 
Thank you for joining us for the Christ Unveiled webcast. If Christ Unveiled Ministries is being a blessing to you, please consider supporting our efforts, and we continue to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. Christ Unveiled Ministries, your church home on the Internet.